Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for coming on today. How are you doing? Can you hear me? What happened? Yes, can oh, you hear oh. me? Oh, okay. Um, can you introduce to yourself? Oh, I forgot. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm Asian, so we're Asian, so. Um, can you introduce to yourself to the audience, please, of who you are? Yes, yes. Um, but in answer to your question, I was saying I'm I'm busy. I'm a little tired. Ah, uh, that's what. Sick, but show must go on. Oh wow! So much uh, enthused about your work. Let's go. Yes, yes. So introduce myself. Okay, so my name is Shin Jenny Das. I am the founder and CEO, CEO and founder of the Das Media Group. Which basically, Johnny, it's an empowering media production company. Uh, that's how we're we're growing, and that's how I'm, you know, billing it. So right now, you know, obviously the book, you know, my first memoir at 26, that's one of our products. Newsletter uh, is one of our products. Every month, you know, we're doing the Go Getters Club newsletter and. All of these events, live events, is one of our products, um, and then we're going into publishing big time. So I'm, you know, doing my own digital media platform, all to empower go-getters with the content, you know, audio, visual, you know, social media, all of that to empower go-getters with the actions to take so that they can achieve their goals. Thank you for that. And I've been been watching your interviews, and I trying to connect with the audience here. My mission in life is to impact the special education because I was in special education, which I always thought it was stupid. Um, and the millennials and the, you're introverted because I read your book. I want to connect with that too. Um, for people who are introverted, because people think that in the world of, you know, I think in America, because in Asia, it's actually introvert. Because yes. most of the Asian country, they're introverted. Because yes. that's where the, in India, because I read all this story about, um, can you tell us about how to deal with this introvertedness that it can win? Because I see this connection between, this this connect with uh, the American culture, because the American culture is about the intro, uh, extroverted, because people think right. extroverted can win. And right. you have so much... Uh, for people who are introverted and yes. Chinese. Yes. Because um, I interview um, a person who do like his passion and he's, yeah. he had anxiety. So yeah. how can you bridge that gap? How can you tell the people who are introverted shyness that they can win? Yeah, totally. Johnny. And I appreciate you for being an example, first of all, of a go-getter who is introverted, but is still winning. Right. I think for me, um, and, and, you know, thank you for, for reading the book, uh, because I do talk about that a lot, right. Which is, you know, I never wanted to change, um, who I am, you know, um, I think people around me do. And I will say I'm um, Johnny in India, Asia. Yes. Introverted is the norm, but at least for me, I was always forced to hang out with people, to talk to people, to this. So I know that it's the culture, but still the friends and family always try to change you, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, so for me, yeah. Well, and especially because they're like, oh, you're so shy. Go talk, go make friends, go. Because it's always seen as a problem, you know? And, and my uh, mom. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know what it is. Yeah, my family. Right, yeah. right. And my mom, she, she says it all the time. She's like, you know, I was worried that you weren't hanging out with the other kids. I was worried that it's a, it's a problem, you know? So you're seen as a problem child, you know? Um, so for me, that was a big uh, thing that I had to overcome. But really, you know, I think the advice, and I, and I talk about this a lot just on social media too, is that introverts have to see life as a series of one-to-one -one conversations. Because um, I know for me, when I first came into the media, I was very overwhelmed, you know? I was like, this is too much. I mean, I don't know if I can do this. I'm, I'm introverted, I'm basically shy. But then I thought about it and I was like, it's just talking to people one-to-one -one, and that's what I've done my whole life, right? But now it's like a, it's like a group of one to one conversations, you know. Um, so that's how I've done it, you know. And and that's what I would say to other shy go getters to do, you know, is that you just have to focus one to one to one, and then after the end, you'll say, "Oh my God, I talked to ten thousand people." <laughs> um, the the reason why I know a little bit about in in uh, Indian culture because I had an ex before, cheese from yeah. Nepal. Yeah. Talk about um, 
Well, her experience was a little bit different when she came to America. It was hard for her to speak English, so she couldn't understand it. Right. In boarding school, and she cried. Yeah. So I remember yeah. that one. And you said your, uh, you have you love Indian song. What is it? Hip hop songs or what? What those are you familiar with the guy named? Well, he's not Indian, but he's uh, he like represent an India song, uh, Arja. Arja? Yeah. No, I haven't heard of him. Well, but when it. I said the music, Johnny, it's everything. It's hip hop. It's Bollywood. It's. I mean, I'm a big fan of just Indian music in general, classical Indian music, which is more, you know, just like you know, like classical, like you know, English music. It, it's like it's more hardcore, you know. But I love all of it, and I grew up on Bollywood, and and I was very honest about that in the book. I mean, I'm sure you know what Bollywood is, but you know, the movies, the music, the culture. I grew up on that, you know. So for me, that's so normal, you know, to um to just have that and you know singing dancing you know that, that was my life <laughs> well i mean also in indian culture because i read it in steve job books that he went to india yeah so the because i think that we have to there's a because i want to bridge the gap again to this culture and the norm see because basically i when i was a kid i was born in america and yeah I'm grateful for my experience, but when I was um, here, I hit it, well, for you, it's because uh, I was reading your uh, story and I wanted to touch on, base on, to bring uh, to the gap because, of course, I'm Asian and I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, we're all different, but we can bring yeah. our gift to the table. I yes. was thinking about, for me, right now, I have a love-hate relationship with being Asian. Okay. I hate the fact that, see, you know the uh, world that, um, uh, the millennials living in technology. Mm -hmm. um, the world that w I lived a long time ago, I hate being American because I wanted to be Asian because I wanted to fit in the Asian culture. Right. I couldn't do it. Right. So like you said, you, you try to figure out how to fuse the American culture with right. Asian culture because I think that the uh, Asian American, the they have lost touch with themselves, you know. Right. I, uh, one of my hero that I look up to is Jackie Chan. He's Asian, yeah. and he said, "I saw one of his movies. He said, culture, you should um, treasure co uh, history of uh, for our culture.' Now, right. how can you bridge the gap between the our co uh, the Asian culture to American? What can you tell that to whom? Because I think that too many Asian people don't." The, you know how the, uh, the, Asian, uh, the Asian cultures, they uh, try to work hard, you know, the, um, for their family. Because in that book that you talk about, isn't really about, like, it's about American culture, but it's more about Asian culture. Because Asian culture, family, they care for their family. Mm -hmm. Usually American, American, at the age of 18, they keep their uh, mm -hmm. kid. But usually Asian culture, they keep their uh, kid in. Can you right. uh, talk about that? Because you talk yes. about it a lot. Yes, yes. No, thank you so much. And by the way, are you done reading my book? Was it that like fast? Yeah, because I wanted to understand the world that you live in. Wow. Because, see, the thing is, I have a very vastly uh, mission that I want to impact the world because I think that everything that you say is very because it's hard to get an Asian to talk about their culture, to right. talk about their connection, because um, I try to bring a lot of Asian uh, in here, but it's really hard. Wow. And Johnny, where are you now? Are you in America now, or yeah, are you? I'm in Maryland. Yeah, I'm in America. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so, so you were born in America, and then did you move to Asia? No, um, I live American my whole life, but my okay. family, it's always traditional. Okay, 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 now I get it, I get it. Are you, are you Vietnamese? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so basically, um, yeah, so thank you for, for bringing that up, and, and I agree, because I, I will say for me, Johnny, the, the issue was I didn't find someone in the media who is like an immigrant like me, because if you see like Hollywood and everything now, they're all like my parents came here when, you know, and I was born here, so for me, I'm an, as you read, I came to America at nine and a half, like that's like old, you know, that's not like a child, like that, you're like almost 10 years old, you know, so for me, I, I just wanted to connect with someone because, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. I have friends, Johnny, who, you know, at Georgia Tech, 
came to America at 18. Okay. So not to be, you know, whatever, but if you come to America at 18, you're not growing up in America. Does that make sense? Like you mean? You're, you're like 18, 19 years old. Right. So I couldn't really relate to them because their whole first 20 years of their life was in India. Right. Which that was not my story. I only spent five years there. And then I couldn't relate to people who are full America because that was not my life. So I needed someone to look up to who was in the middle, you know, Ah. and I didn't find that person because my American, you know, Indian American friends, they are very American. And, And I'm very honest in the book in saying that I've only become American recently. Because for the longest time, I didn't feel like I belonged in this culture. You know, I didn't think that the NFL spoke to me. I didn't think that, I mean, anything that you saw in the media, I was like, I don't, I don't understand, you know. Um, Because one thing about American culture, it is very exclusive. I don't think it's inclusive. What do you mean by that? Meaning that like, if if you don't know about baseball, Johnny, like you're screwed. You know what I mean? I don't know about baseball. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I felt. That's how I felt. And then also just the female angle. There's just not a whole, and I was at just, as you sent me this link, I promise you, I was just going to tweet that I'm speaking at the Dublin Tech Summit next week. And there's just not a whole lot of women on, I mean, who speakers, you know, and much less women of color as in not Caucasian. So I was just struggling with all of that, that where is that one person who I can relate to, who's a great like in between and there was no one. So I just wanted to start with that. But in answer to your question, bridging the gap, I think for me, it really, I mean, to me, it's been pretty simple because I haven't like, you know, I haven't like thought so much about it, but really it's, you know, I am Indian, you know, values, culture, morals, you know, family, you know, all of that. But what I love about America now that I'm like obsessed with is just the freedom, you know, freedom to create your own life, freedom to build your own business. And just for me, like being outspoken, you know, even though I'm introverted, you know, cause the introvert, you're right. is like very typically Asian, but for me now, like the energy and the fact that like every, everywhere I go, you know, on my face, I have written, I don't give up. Right. Because I don't, I don't give any, you know, uh, but you know, I think that's very American. And I think that this whole mentality of being a go-getter, um, it is very quintessentially American. So for me, that's how I found the balance is by keeping my foundation, family, culture, da, 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 and then building all this amazing, just like freedom on top of it. And now I'm this like great, you know, person. And I, I feel so good about who I am now. That's I mean, good. Well, yeah, for a long time, I was like, I don't want to be in America. Like, I honestly told my parents and they were like, no, nope, we're here. You can't leave it. We're all here. You know, and I said, because I'm like, I don't, because if you, if you think about it, the expatriate culture, which for me, I'm, you know, we lived in Malaysia for four and a half years, as you read. Um, that was my life, you know, like hanging out with people from Indonesia, from Malaysia, from Vietnam, from, and then I come here and they're like, I'm from Seattle. I'm from Maryland. And like, that's all they've seen. Um, some people that I went to school with just literally just now got a passport. So for me, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I don't really even understand any of you. And, but, but what I did was then I took it as a challenge that I can't, like, I have to try, you know? And and I think that's what I've done ever since I started public speaking. Um, all of my like public speeches were very quintessentially American, Georgia, future business leaders of America, uh, American Legion, which is like a veterans organization. So I think for me, that's how I like became American is like through speaking. Um, and then now it's just like, they're like, Oh my God, American. Like, you know, and I'm just like, wow, this is like, this is overwhelming. Cause I, I didn't feel like I belonged here for the longest time. I, some of it was the skin color and everything, but now, as you know, I mean, you're seeing a lot of Brown, you're seeing a lot of you know black on TV, you know, I mean, it's not like, well, there's no Brown person, you know, it's, it's not like that anymore, but there's no brown person with my experiences, you know? And I think that that's kind of the gap that I'm trying to fill. Mm, thank you. Yeah. For, that. Yeah, for me, it's a little bit different story. Um, back in American, I mean, back in the school days, I can't find any Asian. I can right. find here and there, but there's no Asian. Because um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of diversity in America where you have like uh, white, black, yeah. but usually when I was in high school, I hang out with the whites. Yes. So, but they're usually nerdy. Yep. But 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 the thing is, for me, I'm a little bit crazy. 
because back in then, uh, in middle school, I found my uh, way to make people laugh. Yeah. I understood how to make people laugh because um, it's, it's a dynamic between a person and a human being. It's just, it's just uh, for me, it's just um, try to find a way to, because like you said, you wasn't, you want it, you wasn't craving attention because you said that you want, you also also, because uh, I watch a lot of videos trying to mm -hmm. see, because you also in the book, you talk about solitude. Yes. And the thing is, and I also hear you talk about, uh, let's talk about solitude parties. And I hate the fact that people waste their life mm -hmm. on parties because um, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. There's many different parties. Right. Um, but the gym, what happened was 21, uh, at 22, uh, or whatever, I listened to Jim Rohn. He said, while people party, you should study. While people yeah. suck up the sun, you suck up good ideas. Right. Most people, because the thing is, I was watching your uh, video with the um, kid, and it was making me sad that the culture that we live in, the American culture, it's an industry that – because I read a lot of deep in this understanding of the world yeah. that we're pushed. No so smart. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, well, I'm not that smart. I just read. Um, but no, there's an experience that I experienced in life that, okay. So back in 2011, mm -hmm. I broke up with my ex, mm -hmm. we broke up with each other. Mm -hmm. but that's where I understand Indian culture. Mm -hmm. um, well, Nepal and India are different countries, by the way, but was she Indian? Like she yeah. was like, she was true Indian. Oh, she was Indian. Okay. Yeah, she was Indian. Um, and yeah, because um, the thing is, we um, when we with my uh, what was it? With her and with my um, her friends. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she had a Indian friend, and mm -hmm. had all the Indian. We were uh, sitting together at a picnic. Yeah. Boarding school. I couldn't fit in because I tried to fit in because I wasn't true Asian. That's my right. Point. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But. The thing is, uh, what was it? What was it called? I lost it. That I was trying to bridge the gap. Solitude? Yes. Um, introverted, right? So yes. I read in the book called Quiet Power, the mm -hmm. Harvard push or push people who are really shy and introverted, try to be extrovert, but they're, they can't be. That's, they cause a lot of anxiety. Can you right. talk about solitude? That's, it's important because I think that it's sad that the American code, because the culture that we live in, yeah, the school, I know that you don't see it that way, but I say it because I study and a lot of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. talk about it, mm -hmm. is that the school was built so you can work. Have you ever heard Rich That Poor That uh, by mm -hmm. Robert Kiske? It's you mm -hmm. built to work for the employee instead of being an entrepreneur because you have an right. entrepreneur mindset right. while other people have a employee mindset and they don't have a, it's sad that they don't have a vision. Can you talk about that solitude? Correct. Correct. And I, I, yes, I, I follow Robert and, uh, and, uh, I, is who wrote quiet power? Um, uh, Susan, Susan Cain. Yeah. Yes. I follow her as well. Um, I love both of them. They're, they're, um, I, 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 I appreciate any, uh, thought leader with, uh, a movement, right? And I think both Susan and Robert have their movements. Um, Susan is, you know, power of quiet, you know, quiet power. And Robert is rich that poor that. So I, I love that. Um, I, I'm, 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 big, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of movements. So I think that with solitude, um, and I'm very honest about this, Johnny, that in the beginning, you know, the parents, friends, etc., they all tried to change me, right? Go hang out with these people. Go talk to these people. Even to this day, like my mom makes fun of me. She's like, I'll remember when we picked up this, you know, girl from school and, uh, you know, she was in the car and you didn't even talk to her, you know? And so I was always made to feel bad. And frankly, that I should apologize and say sorry because I didn't talk to somebody or whatever, right? And that, that is very Asian, right? Like, oh, go talk to the elder, go, you know, do this, go do that, you know? And so I think it took some maturity uh, for me. And frankly, just a couple of years ago, probably, till I said that I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I have no interest in talking to someone who I don't want to talk to, you know? Um, so I think pushing back was one of my first steps to reclaiming my identity and, and independence and solitude. And then I also think just protecting it, you know? Um, and, and by the way, I, I have a lot of friends, you know, it's not like that. It's just, I'm very 
particular about who I'm going to talk to and who, because I'm also at a point now, and I think you are also there that I don't have time, you know, to talk to people who don't inspire me, who don't uplift me. Right. And who don't support me. Right. If you're going to constantly put me down, say what I'm doing is shit and be like, oh, you're going to fail. Then I don't, why would I, why well, I don't have time. You know what I mean? So I think that's also something that plays in my mind is just protecting my energy and protecting my solitude. And so um, that's something that I very actively do now. Whereas I think before um, I was like, oh, whatever, like she's telling me to talk to her. Okay. But even then I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to this person. I don't want to, you know, do this. And I know with Asian culture also, you know, women will always still go and uh, talk to the uncle, hug the uncle, do this. And so I think from a young, yeah, from, from like a pretty young age, I was like, I don't, I'm not interested, you know, and my parents make fun of me all the time. They're like, when you were, yeah, you read that, right? Birthday parties, the chapter's called birthday parties. Yeah. I, I cried at every party and I was like, I'm leaving. I'm not going. So I think from day one, I was always kind of my own person. Um, but somewhere within the Asian culture that did get squashed. And I think America has brought it out again. Does that make sense? Mm. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's the thing about that um, the Asian culture. See, the thing is, I like Asian culture, but not in the traditional way because yeah. I, because I talk to, uh, I listen to a lot of videos on Asian culture, and it uh, parent parents make them yeah. do the traditional route, right? Instead of, right. Um, because you know, uh, instead of following their dreams, right. You, you, of course, you follow your dreams. That's where you're, um, you're trying to get your message across. Yeah. See, the thing is, I, I start to notice because my other mission is to be able to disrupt a industry. I guess I dis, I don't despise, but I hate their thinking. For yeah. me, because I am, when you come to energy, mm -hmm. I think you know about this a lot. The law of attraction community is what inspired me to do this. Right. Because they don't take the action. You always talk about the action. Correct. And that they they wait for all the stars to align, but they don't do anything with it. Right. And when it comes to, do you see yourself when you do your dream, It does it bring out the best of you? Your energy? You think that all the circumstances align with your vision? Meaning my life circumstances, have they aligned with my vision? Is that your question? Yeah, like, like, do you see that you attract these things into your life? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. And I'll be honest, I think it was so hard at first because now I'm going on year three, Johnny, um, with everything, the business, all that. I think um, it was just really hard to get started because no one knew what I wanted to do. No one understood it. Everyone was like, this is stupid. Media companies don't make money. Um, I heard all of that, you know, and... Um, you know, I think it was just really difficult to explain what I want to do uh, to other people. And so I think in the beginning, I don't think that the circumstances aligned, you know, at all. Um, and then just, you know, financially, um, it's been really difficult. You know, I think I've, I tweeted the other day that media production costs are exorbitant. I mean, they're so expensive. And you know this, to create a good studio, you know, lighting, live events. You know, I spent a fortune on my first Atlanta tour. Um, mostly because that was for me. I was like, oh, you know, the pictures and everything. But long term, like, I can't do that. I don't, have to, I don't have the money. I don't have, you know, the, the ability to spend as much as I did there in, in you know, every tour in the future. Um, and so I think, I think that in the beginning, they didn't align. I think now I'm really excited and honored to say that they are aligning slowly but surely, um, slowly but surely. And then I think just you know, I think the importance of activation energy. I mean, every day I have to be asking for a sale, you huh. know, every day, you know, like I messaged you and I was like, Hey, read the book. I mean, some people, I know they make fun of me for that. They're like, Oh, she's always, you know, whatever, like maybe but, no one wants it. And she's like forcing, you know, people to buy. But I'm like, if, if you don't know about my book, my, like, how are you going to get it? You know? But, but that's the thing though. But you, but you read my message. That's what I'm saying. Cause basically I was like, I was okay. So I was going to buy it in the morning, but I got yeah. like lazy. So, cause yeah. I stayed late and I was, I slept. So I wake up yeah. late and then I had to do an interview. So, but the thing is uh, in that message, um, you didn't know I noticed something that I was watching you by see the thing is you have, uh, I read, uh, I watch and read what you did. is the same thing as me. Yeah. 
um for you you know how to close yeah oh yeah yeah you said that i think and yeah you have, yeah you have you have the ability to close people right follow up see the thing is with most people with their dream is because i talk i hear you talk about uh, you have to message a lot of people and try to yeah. in, uh, spam them and i yeah. did the same way because yes. it's really hard to get an interview with really uh, big people right well right. it's because for me i wanted to impact people to be able to bring not many people understand that you got to take the audience and try to bring them to relate to them because people you have to relate them in some way that right. say hey there's this person that's just like you and they're doing your, their dream yes. but you can do it but the problem yes. is people aren't like you say in your media they're right. relating like the media is right. not relating with people Correct. Well, and I also think, Johnny, I'm at a point where, like, if I talk to, you know, 12 people and they all say no, like, I'm, if you think about it, I'm much closer to a sale than if I didn't talk to anyone. Hmm. That's my, yeah, that's my new perspective. Because I think, you know, rejection, definitely, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, everybody said no. Um, but now I'm at a point where it's like, actually, if 12 people say no, I'm 12 steps closer to a yes than I would have been otherwise. You know, and I think that's a really empowering perspective. And that's something that I think about very deeply now, because um, basically where we are right now is the book is actually selling pretty well. And, you know, people are like, oh, we'll buy it this weekend. I'll buy this. So I'm, you know, that's a recurring revenue stream. But I'm also trying to build up my newsletter products. And, you know, it's like I'm a go getter. I have a business. You know, here's five hundred dollars. Can you create like a you know, messaging sponsorship you know, like that? So I'm trying to sell those. And it's a little bit, you know, rocky also because people are like, oh, I have fifty dollars. And I was like, I don't have time for fifty dollars. You know, so either it's going to be five hundred or nothing or a thousand and you know above. So um, that's where I am now is just making more sales. And then also like for me, social partnerships um, have been quite a driver last year. So, you know, calling me like, oh, is, is Intuit ready to, you know, partner again? You know, so I mean, everything I have to, you know, ask. And I think at some point what happens is, you know, the right place, right time. And then they start asking you. Um, so like last year, the social partnerships was a very big achievement for me because 2017, Johnny, you know, it's like the, uh, you know, tweets, they'll pay for tweets, they'll pay for Instagram stories. Uh, 2017, I made, no joke, $600, $600 from social partnerships. Last year, it was five figures. Wow. Yeah, so it's a huge jump um, in a year. And they all came to me. So they all asked me, they were like, oh, do you want to do this? So now I'm just following up to get repeat business um but they already know who i am they already know who i am they reached out to me first last year which i'm so so you know happy about because again they were like we saw what you're doing you know we saw your twitter we saw because again johnny i was not doing nothing you see what i'm saying i was hustling i was doing my twitter i was doing my uh, uh instagram you know building that up without anyone noticing but then last year they came to me and they were like we see what you're doing here, here's the project. Are you interested? And every project was four figures combined, five figures. So. Well, it's interesting um, that I had to um, bridge that gap. You said you wasn't. How when you said hustle? How can you for introverted? How can you gap between hustle? Because I think maybe you know Gary V with his content. You know Gary V? Yes, 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 yes. He's yeah. Amazing. How do you? Because between um, you probably know the former CEO of Huffington Post then. Correct, Ariana. You, yeah. Yes, uh, I look up to her for her yeah. advice. Um, how do you bridge that gap between being an introverted and hustle? Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. a lot of people talk about burnout. Sure, sure. And, and Joni, do you, do you know what Canva is? Have you heard of Canva? No. Okay, so Canva is this uh, basically web publishing tool um, that you can use to create graphics, imagery, et cetera. The problem statement before was that um, graphics like an Adobe, um, Photoshop, all this stuff, um, Illustrator. It was just very clunky to use. It was kind of difficult to use. I um, mean, it had a lot of steps. It wasn't intuitive. So this woman who's my like superhero, um, she's now like early 30s. It's so a little older than me, but created this uh, web publishing tool called Canva. Now it's a, you know, I think billion plus valuation. Uh, and, and where I was going with this is she, in her interview with, uh, uh, on the podcast, How I Built This, um, she says that, you know, she's, a, she's an introvert, you know, so I'm seeing more and more stories of entrepreneurs completely killing the game who are introverts, you know, and I think oh, there's 
something about that. Yeah, I think there's something about that because, and, and I thought about her story, I thought about my story. And I think that, you know, for me, like, because I get all of my energy from myself. Right, right, right. Dependent on other people to energize me, to help me, to work with me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm fine. If like right now I'm in my room, there's no one here. Like, I'm still okay. You know, whereas I have friends who, you know, freak out, you know, if there's no one talking to them, no one wants to hang out with them. I mean, they're like, 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 like a puddle of water because they're so sad, you know? Uh, so for me, I think that's a huge benefit. You know, I also think that being an introvert allows me to connect very, very deeply to a single person one-to-one. Um, and I know for me, that's been a big feedback of just everybody. They were like, wow, we really love how you connect with people one-to-one. We really love how you have hundred and what, almost 40,000 Twitter followers, but you actually message people one-to-one because that's how I am in real life, right? Because that's how I am in real life. I talk to people one-to-one. I'm respectful. I'm polite. I'm, you know, friendly and all, but one-to-one, you know, and I think that's a superpower. You know, I honestly think that's my superpower, at least that I'm able to have those one-to-one connections. Whereas, you know, extroverts sometimes, not all the time, sometimes struggle with one-to-one. You know? Well, it's because we wasn't taught, and right. I well, at least I wasn't taught in the right. culture. That yeah, we. So the thing is, I hate the. For me, I hate school. I, I skip school yeah. and stuff like that. But I, I know about your story about the how you grow up. It's it's really fascinating story, where you bridge the gap with between the uh, American culture. Yeah. The, I wish that people would have see the thing is people force um that you have for me at least that mm-hmm. you have to force mm-hmm. what subject that you have to learn but they didn't put you how to win friends and influence people right 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 and then the uh, book called power of the Ch- uh, power of charm by brian tracy with yes. David Evan. for me the reason why i can do this interview because i understand that i have to let you talk about yourself mm-hmm. i can't let i can put my ideas but that's the thing that people haven't taught and so when it comes to, because uh, I'm interested, when it comes to solitude, can you listen to an inner voice? Like, mm-hmm. do you get this inner voice or do you contemplate, do you connect with ideas? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes to all of it. Um, I do, I do. And I think what I've really gotten good at, Johnny, is just like zoning everything out and just focusing on this um, and what's inside. And I think there's a downside to that as well because. Um, you know, when you are so like inner focused, sometimes you forget, forget about the real world, you know, um, because you're like, oh, you know, you know, whatever it's all, you know, they don't matter. They don't matter. But, you know, saying too much that they don't matter is also bad because then you're not realistic, right? You're not pragmatic. So I think it's like a very like healthy balance between the two. Um, but it, it is something that I have gotten super, super good at. Um, Because I mean, every day, right, Uh, you know, parents are like, oh, you know, this is not worth it. Go back to go back to Google, you know, go back to Facebook, get a real job. You know, you can make so much money there. But, you know, what I try to tell them is, you know, entrepreneurship doesn't have a wealth um, limit, right? Like you can make whatever, you know, Um, and if you do it right, you know, you really can make whatever. But in a corporate job, I can't make whatever. You know, there's a limit, you know, it's not like, you know, today your salary is 300,000 tomorrow. It's 500. I mean, it's, it's not like that. Right. So, you know, I think that's frustrating, you know, to always like hear that is, Oh, this is not working. You're going to fail. And then of course, just, you know, um, yeah, just mostly for me, the, the issue, you know, the, the like forces are probably family because, you know, it's just hard for them to understand what any of this is. Um, friends are happy. I would say friends are really like, wow, you're doing so amazing. Wow, you're inspiring me. Wow, you know, so I think, you know, I, I have a lot of outside voices now, but I always just listen to myself. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you're so right. Look, cause basically, um, that's why it uh, what was, it? it's the death of Japan if they don't do anything about it. Cause if you hear a Japan story, it's kind of yeah. sad. Right. Most people, that's the thing. That's the thing that um, the American children, they built this cock in a machine. Right. Um, I see that um, it's sad for me. Um, I see it's sad that people who go to work every day, they clock yes. the clock out, but they don't have a vision for their life. They don't have, right. Right. because I believe that if they do have a vision, if they just work on their dream, amazing things happen. 
Well, it just crushed my soul. I can't, I, I, I can't watch. When it comes to, okay, let's talk about this. You interviewed Damon John. Yes. And that's pretty interesting. How did you um, met him or how did you get in touch with him? Yeah. No, thank you. Um, thank you for noticing. Um, and yeah, I have to make that more public <laughs> uh, now that yeah my following has grown. But basically, um, Chase for Business reached out to me uh, uh, October 2017. And again, that was also so amazing because you know and i and i say this in the book a lot i didn't have any connections i didn't know anybody you know so i i I mean we're we're asian families johnny no one i mean unless you're asian family who you know dad is a mom is you know ceo or something but most of us were not like that you know so we're successful but you know still middle class you know still upper middle class so for me it's not like my dad can just call uh, CNN. I mean, we don't know anyone there, you know? So for me, when I first started, I was like, you know what? Like I have to do it on my own. You know, my content has to speak for itself. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, my, my quality has to speak for itself and, and that's how I'm going to make it. Right. And so for me, you know, all I had was Twitter, uh, Facebook, whatever, LinkedIn, you know, like my, my, you know, six platforms. Right. And so I just went hard um, in all of them uh, for a while. And then in October, 2017, that was when Chase for Business reached out and they were like, you know, Inc. 5000. By the way, I totally have always known what Inc. 5000 was. So Inc. Magazine has uh, an annual celebration of 5,000 of the fastest growing private companies in America. Huge deal, a huge uh, award uh, party conference. Um, and they were like, hey, so, you know, Chase for Business is the title sponsor of Inc. 5000. By the way, I also bank with Chase, so it worked out really well. Um, my business, yeah, so it was a Chase. And so I told them, I said, you know, I'm, I'm a Chase fan. You know, this, this is great. And so they hired me as their on-point reporter um, for the whole conference. And so because, and you know this, I mean, you know media enough to know that whoever pays is king and queen right so because chase was literally footing the bill like for the whole thing or like most of you know the whole thing um they could do whatever they wanted right like it's like their conference right and so um i was interviewing a whole bunch of like winners in the inc 5000 so these people have founded started uh companies on the inc 5000 which by the way was super inspirational to me um because you know celebrity entrepreneurs are great but like to me it's also just the average person who has built a million dollar business you know and by the way for the Inc. 5000 you do have to pass a couple of million dollars in revenue uh, in a year so everyone i was hanging out with um, was a multi-million dollar business owner um, which is a huge deal and obviously that's not something i can say that i uh, meet every day in my life, you know? Um, so I think that was a huge moment for me. So, and, and, I, and the other great thing, Johnny is chase for business gave me full control over all the content. So all the videos, I don't know if you've seen all the videos, but that was all my content, um, which is kind of cool and amazing because usually like they will tell you what to say. Um, but I kind of negotiated that in the beginning. I was like, Hey, like, I'm happy to do this, but just FYI, like this has to be my content because otherwise like, why would I do this? You know? Um, yeah, so, but they were super great. So I, I, not so much go-getter, I think then it was building, but I did ask them like just questions that I wanted to ask. So for example, Damon John, um, we attended a VIP lunch with him. And at the end of it, he was talking about his new book at the time, The Power of Broke, which I don't know if you've read, but if you haven't, you totally should. It is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Just collection of stories of entrepreneurs who started out broke. Very relatable. Um, and so I, I so he, he talked a lot and he was like, you know, I believe he told he told us, he said, I believe in um just creating cultures of micro influence. Um, which was interesting to me because you know, I'm coming from the age where it's like celebrity influencers, celebrity or bust, right? Uh, and so he came up and he's like, No, you know, so uh, he's he said micro influencers are where it's at. 2,000 followers, 4,000 followers, but they're like super engaged, you know, it's like 4,000 followers, but with an 11% uh, like rate, you know, with an 11% comment rate. And so it was just outrageous. And they're like, so involved and engaged. And he told us, he said, that's who you should go for in terms of brand evangelists and people who you want them to talk about your brand and everything. And so I thought that was really interesting because again, I had never heard like a person of his stature uh, say that right like usually they're like yeah celebrities are the way to go have fun um you know pay them but that he was one of the first people to be like no the normal 
mom, mom blogger. Like she's your hero. And I was like, wow, this is really interesting. As I, I pulled that out. And so one of the segments I said, you talk about, you know, micro influencers. Why do you believe in that so deeply versus celebrity influencers? Like that was one question, uh, creating ambassador cultures of influence. And then um, I just talked to him about what else? Um, that was a major topic. That was a major topic. But I think also just, you know, how being broke leads to this desperation that creates, uh, you know, new businesses, new opportunities. So we talked about just what fuels innovation um, and just different things like that. But again, I had full control over that. And so Chase uh, had me interview him basically. So like that was, it was between them. It was between him and Chase and I was the like third person. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I was the, well, for me, it's, it's a <clears throat> different story for me. Of course, the book, Power of the Broke, uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, celebrity that was in there was, have uh, you heard of uh, Josh Peck? Yes! Yes, yes, yes. He's Josh cool. Peck, um, I, I grew up watching Dragon sure. Josh. I sure. love Dragon Josh. Yeah. Um, when you do the interview, I'm 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 interesting, uh, interested in how do you do the interview and what's are, for you? What are you looking for? Right. Yeah. And by the way, that was the first time I've ever interviewed someone. Not him. Like he was not my first, but that weekend like was my first time interviewing. Um, which, by the way, as you know, is a is a totally different skill. You know, um, than creating content on social media, then. Uh, being, you know, like doing your own videos, um, interviewing is like a whole different thing. So I think for me, first of all, I'm um, joining, it's like complete respect. Um, I have to interview someone I respect. And frankly, if I don't respect them, then I, I shouldn't be interviewing them. You know what I mean? Because I, I, it has to come from a place of mutual admiration. You know what I mean? Because I, if, if, what if, do you mean by I, that? yeah, like I have to, like with Damon John, I mean, even before any of this, I was always a fan, you know, um, with what he's done with FUBU and, you know, Shark Tank. And he has his own like um, consultancy called Shark Group. Uh, super fan. Like I've always been a fan. Just he's humble. He's down to earth, you know, came from, you know, nothing. Now he's so huge. Like that has always resonated with me. So when they asked me to interview him, I was like, great. Like this is like, I got this, you know. But if it's someone who I don't intrinsically admire or respect, um, I would probably pass on that. You know, because I like, I can't fake, you know, love for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't fake um, admiration for them if it doesn't already exist. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think that for me is the number one thing is just respect. And, you know, do I truly love what they're doing? Do I truly respect what they're doing? Um, I think that's number one. And then number two, I would say is, you know, do I like, do I want to share bits and pieces of their journey with my audience? And do I honestly think that my audience will find value in that? I think that's another huge one, you know, um, because for me, uh, you know, my audience, as you've already kind of figured out, it is sort of hustlers, small business owners, entrepreneurs, investors, like it's very much Damon John. You know, so when I did that, like there's so many people who reached out to me after because I didn't tell anyone about it. Like it just happened. You know, we did the chase thing and then they just uploaded the video. So it wasn't like, hello, this weekend I'm interviewing Damon John. Like, what are your questions? Like they, I didn't do any of that, you know? And so it was, and people were like, holy shit. And I was like, wow, like this was such a great fit, you know, for my audience and, you know, yeah. So I, I think, you know, just stuff like that, you know, like if I, if I go to a beauty uh, conference um, absolutely my people, go-getters want to look beautiful, but I don't think I am the, the, the expert on beauty. You know, I think I'm the expert on uh, self-love, you know, on uh, self-care maybe, on um, how to shine from within. But like, I would not feel comfortable um, interviewing like, uh, you know, somebody on like the way you do a mascara. I mean, I could do that for fun. You know, I could do that just because it's fun. But like, if you look at just like my expertise, I don't think that it would be like beauty. You know what I'm saying? So like just stuff like that, I think is very important because people like they can tell like what's real, you know, they can tell what's not real. And I think with Damon John, like everyone reached out to me afterwards and they're like, wow, you guys really like fit so well, you know? Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Just, yeah. Like I'm a hustler. He's a hustler. I mean, we're, you know, relentless, you know, we're super driven you know like just a lot of the qualities are the same you know so with him i was like wow like this is 
like one to one, you know. <laughs> well, at least the um, because I think that when you talk when it comes to celebrities, that's why I think that people who because I want to bridge the gap between people. People live in this world where they think that they can't reach their celebrities. For me, right. I think that you can because um, to me, there's the technology that we have. We can reach out. Well, right. actually, thankful to you that you tweet out because I got this guy who wanted to do an interview, so I can do an interview with him. Like, they're all entrepreneurs. Yes. The one with right. your Twitter, they're all entrepreneurs. Yes. And that's what I'm trying to build up for my audience. Um, yes. When it comes to, well, thank you so much for that. And um, for me, when it comes to interviewing, my aspect is to understand the human being of understanding why what they do and why they love what they do. And right. the, for me, I wanted to help the average person because you're a very interesting, um, a very inspirational story where you do public speaking. When it comes to that, what make you do, because you talk about um, you did public speaking and you did them for free. How yeah. do you, what make you do public speaking and what, what is your message for people that are trying to either do their dreams, public speaking? Yeah, totally. And uh, and I will say, Johnny, I do have to run at 11.30, just oh, FYI, okay. I don't know if you're on Eastern time, but okay. yeah. Yes, it is a couple more minutes, but um, yeah, because I'm I'm like prepping for the summit next week, and I have to just figure out content for that and all that stuff. Ah, busy, busy. Um, but yeah, so basically, you know, I think um, any go getter who wants to speak and who wants to start public speaking, I think the number one thing is that they really have to do it, you know. And I think again, coming back to your point, I, I think you'd be so surprised at how many people they just um, they don't do it. You know, they'll say, "I want to be an author, but I don't really write." You know, I want to be fit, but I don't, I don't really go to the gym. You know, I want to, and I get this a lot because again, you know, my people, go-getters, you know, I don't want to say they're all nerdy, but I'll, you know, a lot of them, right? Because that's why they relate to me, right? Like engineer, you know, like I'm, you know, I, I was, I really was, I was a nerd. And now I've like had this like style transformation. So a lot of people reach out to me and be like, I need help with my style. You know, I, I don't know like how to look good. And I'm like, do you, like, if you're, if you're a female, do you, do you go online? Do you learn about style trends? No. Do you do it? No. Do you do, no. So then I'm like, how will like anything happen if everything you're answering? No. You know, if you're a man, if you're a, if you're a boy, if you're a man, if you struggle with grooming, my question is, do you know about um, how suits should fit you? No. Do you know about how your hair cut should be? No. So if everything is no, then how will you even start? Right. So for me with public speaking, it's like, do you even, have you ever written a speech? No. You know, have you ever even tried to deliver it? No. Do you watch TED Talks? No. Right? So then I'm like, how, I mean, what do I do? I mean, there's nothing for me to do. If all of that you're answering no, then clearly you don't even care enough to try. Right? So I think number one, step number one is write a speech. Okay. What do you want to say? Right? Speak your truth. Structure it. You know, I'm a big fan of like writing an essay. You know, what is your argument? You know, what is your analysis? You know, what are the counter arguments? Um, what is your thesis? You know, what is your conclusion? You know, like literally like just let's just go step by step. You know, let's just go step by step. And so for me, that's been a huge help because um, Johnny, in my competitive days, I memorized and delivered speech word for word, like literally memorized, like, like just like this, you know, because for me, that was easy. Uh, now I can't really do that because it's first of all it's so long you know now I'm giving two hour long oh, that's a long time to memorize you know so I, I can't memorize so for me now I have to just know very well what I'm doing and saying and then I can just you know say that uh, well so yeah so I, th I think you know your, your style will evolve but I think what a lot of you and a lot of go-getters are struggling with is the substance right because what I learned very early on um, Johnny is style is great you know how you deliver are you empowering are you motivational but if what you're saying is shit and it doesn't make sense no amount of style can make up for that you know what i'm saying um because for us and, and i say this in in the book that i was judged on substance and style so just because you're pretty and you know you're very empowering it doesn't mean you're gonna win 
Because if what you say isn't smart and intelligent and correct, then it's not going to work, you know? So for me, even now, every time I write, I don't think about, oh, am I going to do this hand gesture? Or like, I don't think about it. I think about what am I going to say first? You know, what is my, uh, what is my goal? You know, so you're going to come to the speech. What do you uh, get away from it? What do you take away from it? You know, um, these are the things that I'm working on. These are the things that I would say that go getters should work on, you know, um, because I think that is, that's going to make the difference, you know? Thank you. And one last question. Yes. What does success uh, look like to you? Because I yes. think millennials, um, we have been pressured for me at least uh, to be able, because I don't like when people force me to do things. Correct. Uh, people in this world and adults, measured by success is material things it's right. fine but that's not healthy for me it's not a healthy way to measure success correct what does success look like to you? correct no and I, and I totally agree with you Johnny um you know having said that I you know I, I love I love uh some material things you know I, I will say that and it's been hard for me in the past few months you know I haven't really been able to get as many of those because again my budget and just income and everything is still so low um, that we're growing. So I'm, I'm not able to get as much as I want, you know, my, you know, cause I, as a woman, I just have like clothes, shoes, yeah, yeah, all, all that stuff. Um, so I, I think some of it is fine. You know, I'm definitely uh, not a non-materialistic person. You know, I think there's many things that I want and I just, I get it and you know, that's fine. So I don't, I don't think it's like, it's so bad. If you want a car, you get it. It's fine. You know, I mean, if you want jewelry, you get it. It's fine. I'm not saying, but I think the problem that both you and I seem to have with the concept is that's all like I'm worth, right? The car is me. I'm the car. That's dangerous. But me being like, I just want these earrings and like, that's not bad. You know what I mean? I think that's how I look at it. Um, but I think that materialistic pleasures only take us so far. And I, I'll tell you one story at Georgia tech. Um, I had a couple of advisors who kept not, not to me, like they were not talking to me. They were just telling us as a whole, they kept saying that, you know, live a life of service live a life of service, serve others, you know, um, help others, serve others. And I'll be honest with you, you know, because of the culture that both of us come from Asian culture, I'm not trying to be rude, but we're never really told to serve others. It's always about, you know, get rich, make it yourself, you know, protect your family, die. Like that's pretty much it. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. So there's not a whole lot of like, what are you going to do to serve others? And so I, and I'll be honest, the, most of these advisors were Caucasian. So why, at Georgia Tech. And I kept thinking about that, that what does that mean that serve others? And then I was like, do I do anything to serve anyone? Because at this point I'm at Georgia Tech and I'm getting my degree. I'm working at Deloitte. It's all for me pretty much. Right. So um, what am I really doing to serve others? Because they kept saying that that is the highest, you know, form of living. And that's what they kept saying that service, you know, there are a lot, a lot of them are very church uh, going, you know, so they were like, this is the highest form of living. It's to serve others. And, you know, for me, you know, as an achiever, you're like, I want to be at the highest form of living, you know? So then I said that, what does serving mean? And then I tried to, you know, peel back all the layers. And then I was like, you know what? It me essentially, it means that I have to provide a lot of value to a lot of people. Right. And then I peeled that layer back and I said, what can I do to provide a lot of value to a lot of people? And then I peeled that layer back and I was like, you know what? I really think speaking is the way, you know, I, I really think that that because, you know, if you think about it, like each speech, I mean, it's so many people, you know, that you can reach. I mean, I thought about that and I was like, you know what? I really think that that is my that's my calling. And so that's when I started the, you know, handle speaker Shinjini. Um, and then now it has just grown from their media. So now it's like media, how I can serve people media by creating empowering media, inspirational media, uh, you know, educational media uh, to empower go-getters. So it's not just inspirational media, because there's a lot of that now, as you know, Johnny, there's a lot of motivational speakers, a lot, even women, a lot of female, but no one has such a distinct brand as me, which is to empower go-getters. It's not even like everyone, it's like, are you a go-getter? Do you want to achieve your goals? Great, you're going to listen to me. If you don't want to achieve your goals, I can do nothing for you. Um, because it is not my job to make you a go-getter. It is my job to empower you to achieve your goals if you are already a go-getter, you know? Um, so I think that was also a very um, nice master stroke in branding um, because I selected a word that is an English language word. A go-getter is a English language word. 
uh, but no one was using it as a movement. Um, because, you know, it was like, oh, go get her on a purse. And I'm like, who cares? But I think I'm the first to use it as a movement. And, and you'll see as it builds and grows and becomes this really big international thing, you'll be like, wow, everybody's a go-getter, you know? Um, which is my point, you know, that's, that's the story, you know, so all of them then build up to me and they listen to me and they follow me. And now you're on a point of serving so many people, you know, so hopefully I can, you know, inspire you and others to look at service as a way of just making it happen. Cause I'll be honest, I had some um, insecurity that, wow, like I'm not a service leader or is it servant leader? I'm not a servant leader. But like, I think my point is anyone can become a servant leader. It just requires drive and that desire. You know what I mean? Because people are like, do you want to serve? And I was like, I don't know. Do I? Like, I want to serve myself. Like, is that bad? You know? And so I think like the answer to that is it's not bad. Thank you. Like, so much. Let's, yeah. Let's use that to, because no, like, I don't know. Very few Asians I know, Johnny, donate anything to them. You know, so just little things. Because we're not taught to do that. You know, we're not taught to do that. And so for me, um, I had to rewire my mindset to be like, oh, this is how you become a servant leader. But I would say that I'm doing okay now, you know? And, uh, and so anyone can make that transition. It's not just like white people. Well, know? thank you so much for doing what you do because I think that too many people say nerds or geek can't win, but they can win but, like yourself. And right. uh, we have to go, all right, where can we find you? Yes, um, Speaker Shinjini is my handle. So that's S-P-E-A-K-E-R-S-H-I-N-J-I-N-I. -I. I'm on all six social media platforms, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, please follow me on all platforms. Uh, my first book is out, um, which you've read, which I'm so stoked about, Unapologetically Shinjini, a memoir at 26 at www.unapologeticallyshinjini.com um, or bit.ly.com forward slash DAS memoir. So it's D-A-S-M. E M O I R. So I'm really excited about that. It is selling really well. Um, so, so far we've sold lifetime because the first version came out in June of last year and now it's the second version, uh, 133 units or copies, which is not bad. Um, so I'm really excited. And my goal is to just blow that up to <laughs> 133 million. That, that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm excited. I think again, everyone is a go-getter. Um, let's continue, you know, building these one-to-one -one relationships and connections and just, you know, growing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a go-getter, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't even know what that is. What does that mean? Yeah, so it's a, it's a person who has a goal and who wants to achieve it. Like, that's the easiest way to explain it, you know. Um, if you Google it, it'll be like aggressive achiever, but really it's like, do you have a goal? Do you want to achieve it? Are you doing something? To achieve it, you're a go-getter. And now if it's like, if you need help to achieve it, then you come to me, you know, motivation, help, whatever. Yeah, so. Okay, well, it's not that I'm against uh, Asian. Uh, it's just that right now, I think you're right. We should live not for, I think that's the problem with jobs. Right. They're, we're, they're living to survive. They're not right. living of service. Exactly, that's exactly. Right. No, you're right, you're right. And, and, and by the way, I think you said Robert said that. I'm 100% in agreement that, the media, the culture, just the world we live in conditions us to be employees. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't condition us to make unlimited amounts of money, you know, right. big success. So I'm having to every day, Johnny, reconfigure my mindset to be like, no, there is actually no cap on how much I can make. I just have to make sure that I spend less, right? And I'm, I don't, you know, spend everything. Um, and I ask for business. And I go, but again, because I'm, I'm not trained to do that. That's not my wiring that let me just ask this person for money, that person for money that, you know, like is it as in value and I'm not just asking for money. I'm, I'm selling a service. I'm selling value. Um, but we're not, we're not taught to do that. So every day it's, I feel it's sometimes uncomfortable. Like, Oh, I have to ask again. What if he says no, but I'm like, if he says no, I'll move on. There's someone else who's ready to pay me today. Right. So. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, you have a mindset. You shift. Do you read or something or you know, I think it's funny. I'm not as big of a reader as I am a writer, and that's weird. Um, but what I do now, um, Johnny, is I'm, I'm very, like, perceptive. You know, so, like, what you said today, I picked up and I stored here. 
you know, somebody, so I'm, I'm very, I'm very perceptive. I don't read as much as I should. I am finishing the power of growth though. So once that's done, um, I'm reading, actually I'm reading Malala's book next. I am Malala. Um, cause I love her. Um, but, uh, no, I don't read as much as I should, but I'm, I'm very perceptive and I'm, I'm generally a, a, a very uh, intelligent person. So I think that helps a lot. <laughs> like yeah. my average intelligence is naturally pretty high. So I think, I think yeah, because when you talk about rewired, not many people understand what is that right, right. word. Right. Because right. I was like, uh, um, when it comes to uh, how you write your book, yeah. How, how do you like write it? What do you do? Like, do you write it in the message in a way? Yeah. No, that's a great question, and I think this will be the last question. I super have to write after this. Um, but basically, you know, and I think this is such a great question because obviously it's my first book. Um, I've never written a book before, and so I think um, we, by the way, which is why it took so long um, because I started this in 2017. So it, it took like two years because uh, I was actually struggling with the messaging, you know. So because on one hand, it's all about my life, right? So if I just like write about my life, I guess my question always was, why would Johnny care, right? Why would Cliff care? Why would Shashank care? You know, they, I mean, they, they're like, great, that's great, whatever, have fun. So I think what I've consciously tried to do, and I, and I literally just finished reading it, you know, cover to cover just a few days ago before making it live, is I'm very happy that it has come out in a way that you can relate to every point of it, you know, which I'm really happy about because I think I could have just written it as a lecture style I woke up, I did this, this was great. Because I mean, to be honest, if you know Johnny, everybody who writes a memoir has already made it, right? They're already famous. They're already celebrities. Michelle Obama just wrote a memoir. So for me, it was a very risky move um, to start my first book with this, that it's a memoir 26. Because a lot of people are like, who is this? But in my mind, I was like, I think they'll, they're gonna read it and they're gonna be like, oh, this is who it is. You know, so I think I'm in some ways going backwards. Um, and so as a result, when I wrote it, it had to connect with you on a deep level. And that is something that I specialize in. I specialize in one-to-one -one connection. That is truly something that I think I'm the best at. Like that is something that I'm the best at. And so my thing was, yeah, you're going to be like, who is this? What? What? And then you're going to read it. And you're going to be like, holy shit. Like this was my story, you know? And I think that's what I'm hearing from everybody that that's what's happening, you know, and, and men and women alike, you know, I'm going to do a final percentage of like how many copies have been sold to men and women, but it, it's a lot of guys um, who have bought this already. And so I, I think it's the same thing. You know, you're looking for inspiration, you're looking for motivation, you're looking for that sort of spark in your life, you know, and I think I can give that to you in a way that's relatable. And I think that's what people are getting from it. But yeah, I think for me writing it, it was, you know, writing out my story and then including points of connection and relatability, you know, because then I'm like, why would people buy this, right? I mean, you know, so yeah. Um, but I'm, I, it was a process. It was a process. I had an editor. I had the whole deal. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy that it's done now. Uh, and it was self-published, you know, which is another um, very amazing thing, but also very difficult thing, you know, um, because you design the cover, you design the biz. You, I mean, it's like literally ground up. You are building everything. But that also means, as you know, you get to keep. Uh, a much larger chunk of the you know, profits and sales. So, because I mean, publishers, they rip you off. I mean, it's unreal. They're like, okay, let me just take all of it, you know? And you're like, what, what, what is life? You know? So I was like, I'm not doing that. I have no interest. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in having a publisher. So, um, yeah. So uh, even Amazon, I'm very like reluctantly putting a paperback copy on Amazon because um, you know, that's, you know, what everybody uses and I get it. But even then I'm like, eh, because I was actually going to put a Kindle ebook, but I was like, nope, you're going to buy the ebook from me and you're going to buy paperback from Amazon, you know? So, yeah. Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, okay. And have an amazing day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Johnny. Thank you too. You. Thank you.